This is uh, the, a program from the Global Compassion Coalition uh, titled Rest and Renewal. I'm Rick Hansen. Uh, I'm very, very glad you're here. Uh, I'm a psychologist, author, teacher, and more importantly, really, uh, I'm a son and a father, uh, a husband and a brother. And I'm speaking to you now from the unceded lands of the first people who lived here in Northern California. Uh, I wanted to offer this program out of my gratitude and deep appreciation for those of you who have already joined the Global Compassion Coalition, uh, which uh, I've been able to, to start with friends and colleagues from around the world. Uh, this is my particular thanks to you for being a member of this coalition. And of course, I'm happy that everyone is here. And I wanted to offer something from my heart that would be useful for easing some stresses, uh, finding your footing on shaking ground, and feeling in good company with others from around the world as we practice together. Uh, I'll be offering a mixture of hopefully useful ideas, uh, some experiential practice. This will be experiential and some discussion. Of course, as with any offering, certainly my own, take what's useful and leave the rest. And with regard in particular to the experiential practices, do whatever's helpful for you. Find your own way into it. Uh, we all speak and teach and offer from our own perspectives, our own backgrounds. Uh, I'm pretty obviously a white, late middle aged uh, American male. And, um, you know, I come from my own place. And it's really important to include other perspectives, other views, including those who are not at all as privileged as I am, really important. So I really encourage you to make your own use of this, of this program. This is an offering of the Global Compassion Coalition, and I hope you and perhaps your organization have already joined, and if not, uh, I certainly invite you. The more people we are, the stronger we are, right? That's gonna be a deep and recurring theme here. And the stronger we are, the more able we are to ease suffering and its causes. Uh, membership in this International Coalition for Compassionate Action will always be free. And we welcome your support in all forms, a membership, telling others about it, and donations that enable us to continue to uh, and, and expand our work in the world. Um, we've been actually able to launch this truly unprecedented global effort through the particular generosity of one individual. And if you have the means to offer financial, um, substantial financial support yourself, we welcome it. Um, please reach out to me about that through the contact form at the bottom of our website's homepage. It's been a challenging year. <clears throat> You've probably noticed around us uh, unprecedented um, disturbances, uh, wars, uh, economic troubles, uh, growing climate catastrophes, uh, a plague uh, that is still among us, and new plagues to follow. There's a lot going on, right? Meanwhile, personally, if you're like me, uh, there have been some real ups and downs, uh, losses, uh, speaking of myself, uh, grief, remorse, and sorrow, real stuff, conflicts with others, uh, challenges, health issues, et cetera, et cetera. And along the way, of course, just the ordinary daily grind, the long hours, the stresses, the emotional wear and tear, it all takes a toll. It all takes a toll, including neuro, hormonally, physiologically, it takes a toll. And after a while, you can start to feel kind of like you're running on empty. You know, you're out of gas. So rest and renewal are really important, really important. They're really important for healing, to refuel ourselves, and to build up good things inside so we have more to offer to others. It's okay to turn toward rest and renewal. Lots of times we deny that for ourselves, even as we encourage other people to take it easy, to slow down, to find a pit stop, some little oasis in daily life from which you can be fed and then you can come back out again. We encourage them to do it, it's really important to allow and encourage ourselves to take in rest and renewal too. It's okay uh, to get on your own side, to be for yourself. Your own wants and needs matter uh, in their own right. And of course, as you take care of yourself and you fill up your own cup, then you have certainly more to offer to others. So 
grounded in our own biology, I'd like to offer three keys uh, for rest and renewal, and then we'll do an experiential practice about them so that you can literally start to hardwire these ways of being into your own nervous system as enduring inner strengths that you can take with you wherever you go through the power of what's called positive neuroplasticity. The first key is to slow it down. I need to remember that one myself because I can just hit the gas pedal and it's zero to 60 pretty quickly. Um, so slowing it down, slow it down, slow it down a little. This reduces activation of the fight or flight sympathetic branch of the autonomic nervous system with related releases of stress hormones of various kinds, including adrenaline and cortisol. Slowing it down reduces that activation. It also buys time for the prefrontal cortex behind your forehead to come more online, uh, to help you gather more information and make wise choices. Plus, as I speak as a longtime couples counselor and you know a longtime husband, 40 plus years now actually, I've really learned that slowing it down in interactions that are getting heated, whew, Helps to, helps to cool them, sometimes, hopefully. Second key, find what's calming, whatever for you. You know, it's like, in effect, where sometimes I think of ourselves as like a, a horse. Uh, my father grew up on a ranch, and so I have a real feeling for that, and, and for horses and other animals and non-human animals. And, um, you know, when we slow it down, it's a little bit like settling and calming, you know, a horse, if you will, of the body that's gotten overly activated, nervous and skittery and jumpy, calming down. So what works for you? Not to suppress anything or to numb yourself, but to calm yourself. What is that? You know, um, maybe just simply exhaling or uh, looking out the window or, you know, finding something uh, that's comforting to you, like simply washing your hands. As we calm down, that engages what's called the parasympathetic branch of the autonomic nervous system, which has the wonderful term rest and digest. Sounds like rest and renewal, right? To some extent. The parasympathetic branch slows the heart rate or is involved in slowing the heart rate. And um, you know, when you calm down in this way, you reduce the wear and tear on your body and you already start building up inner resources. And then the last suggestion, and there could be more, certainly, but this last key is to connect from the heart. Caring and concern for others, simple friendliness, kindness, good wishes, flowing out, that helps others to be sure. Um, receiving, taking in the simple friendliness of others, the fact that they see you or include you when it's true, only when it's authentically true. Um, feeling their appreciation, maybe, maybe their liking, even their love, slowing this down, even having a sense of just opening your heart, breathing in, breathing out, opening the heart. This engages the or activates and draws upon what's called the social engagement system in your brain and your body, uh, which does wonderful things, including increasing oxytocin activity in your brain. And all this tends to quiet the alarm bell of your brain, the amygdala, so it's not so loud and so sensitive and wee, um, and uh, wonderfully through the vagal nerve complex, as we open to positive social connections, that tends to naturally slow the heart rate and ease breathing and support the viscera in the core of your body. And it just feels good, doesn't it, to feel connected from the heart? And last, it's a primal signal of safety because as our ancestors lived together for hundreds of thousands of years and their ancestors before them for millions of years, feeling included, feeling part of the group, positively connected with others was really important for actual safety and certainly for experiences of safety. Pretty good, huh? Good, good things, three simple things. Slow it down, find what is calming, and connect from the heart are all under our control. Even when the world is jangly and busy around us, we can do those things ourselves. And 
just knowing that it's under your control. It's in your power to do this unless you're in a total state of shock or overwhelming pain. And sometimes we are. But other than that, we can deliberately, as we will in a moment, slow it down, find what's calming, and open the heart. So, want to try this as an experiential practice? Uh, I'll do it along with you. This will take about 10 minutes, and then we'll come back and um, you know, I'll ask you how it is, how that was for you. Okay? <clears throat> so let's give it a try. With your eyes open or closed, standing, sitting, walking, or lying down, get a sense of just being here, in this place, in this time, coming home to yourself. Just present with whatever you're experiencing. Sounds, sensations. Perhaps some pain in your body or anxiety in your mind. Perhaps some interest, maybe some easing. Whatever's there is okay. You can let it flow while you remain present here and now. See if you can remain aware of a single breath from beginning to end. Just that is slowing it down. Just this simple coming home to yourself, aware of your body if, if that's comfortable for you, aware of breathing if that's comfortable for you, um, naturally disengages the mind and the body from rushing about. Know what it feels like to slow it down a little, just in by this coming home to yourself that we're doing here. Hmm. And also notice what feels good about slowing down a little? It may be, understandably, that a part of you is still revved up. And it may be that some part of your mind is still kind of racing, maybe looking for a problem to solve or something new to want or um, you know, rehashing over and over something that's been painful for you, it's okay. Some part of your mind may still be doing that. While more and more of you is slowing down. And it's nice to recognize that we can still be functional at only 40 miles an hour or 40 kilometers an hour, not the usual 100. You're still here. You're still alert. You can still think. You can still deal with things from a little more centered place, a little more stabilized place inside. There's a saying, go slow to go smooth, go smooth to go fast. Actually having a core inside 
that is stabilized and not racing about and jerked around in all directions, that stabilized core inside that has a stillness at its, at its essence, a stability, actually is what enables us to really function appropriately when we have to at full speed. And it's good also to be aware of what feels good about slowing down. You like this experience. The liking of it actually helps to increase the wiring of it in your own brain, turning beneficial states of being into beneficial traits woven into the fabric of your own living body. Being aware of what and focusing on what is rewarding, what feels good or meaningful about a way of being, like slowing down a little, helps it become a habit uh, woven into you, a natural place you come from. Well, let's focus on the second key here, which is find what's calming, which you may already have been doing. Um, if you open your eyes and lift your gaze out to the horizon and get a sense of the room you're in as a whole or anything as a whole, neurologically, that's naturally calming. It's really a nice little neuro hack you can draw on anytime you want, raising your gaze, getting a sense of things as a whole. You can feel it. Ooh, naturally calming. You might have a sense of relaxing in your body, deliberately easing tension. That's calming. And also being aware of anything that gives you pleasure. It's enjoyable. Perhaps looking around the room you're in and finding something you like. Like, I like the doorknob <laughs> I'm looking at right now. I like being here with you. Finding things we like, simple, authentic things. Things that are reassuring. Beautiful, even. That's calming, too. The natural endorphins in your, in your nervous system, in your brain, that are released when we have enjoyable experiences are naturally analgesic, pain-regulating in basic ways. And Mother Nature evolved these wonderful ways to help her little babies calm down, in part by eating something that tastes good, finding something pleasurable, calming down. You can feel that right now as you calm down. Noting what feels good about being a little calmer. And remembering that you can still solve problems. You can still stand up for yourself. You can still get the job done. You can still help others from a place inside that's a little calmer, a little more at ease, a little more at peace. You can be effective from a calmer place, including as you head into the next year. And then the third key, sir, the last and certainly not the least, is to connect from the heart. Simple experience here, disengaging from any complicated stories or issues with others, just a simple sense of, oh, maybe simply opening your heart, 
getting a sense of breathing in the area of your heart right now. Finding a sense inside yourself of, of basic wishing others well. Maybe a simple feeling of friendliness, bringing to awareness someone you like or care about. Maybe just a sense that who you are is fundamentally you know, has a basic compassion and kindness that sort of radiates off of you, or it's it's sort of your who you are. And other people move through that field of your own unconditional goodwill, including toward people that you don't agree with or don't approve of or have conflicts with. You can rest in this fundamental warm-heartedness. What's that feel like right now? And you can receive into yourself, of course, as well, positive connections flowing toward you. What's it like to be with others that you know, even if they annoy you sometimes, they like you. You're included. You're part of the group. Maybe you're part of a family. Maybe you feel in common cause with others who care about this earth. Being aware of people who appreciate you. Being aware, perhaps, of a pet, your cat, your dog, the birds. Maybe you feel connected to life and nature altogether around you. It's nice, isn't it? The fundamental source of rest and renewal this feeling of positive, open-hearted, warm-hearted presence. And as we finish here, know what this is like altogether. Slowing it down a bit, calming down some in authentic ways always, genuine ways, nothing forced ever. Slowing it down, calming down, resting in warm-heartedness. These three weaving together, appreciating right now whatever's been, whatever feels good about this, whatever feels beneficial or wholesome about this, appreciating this way of being, as it sinks into you, as it kind of spreads inside, and as you establish yourself more and more in this way of being, as a basic foundation for you, as you move through this life and move through the year to come. Letting yourself kind of stabilize and land in this way of being as you open to it and it lands inside you, weaving its way into your nervous system to become a, a, a part of you that's durable and you can count on and take with you wherever you go. Okay. Come on back and it's it's... It's really okay to continue to feel a little calmer, maybe a little stronger, a little more at peace inside, a little more open-hearted, uh, even as we move into a kind of a more active presentation and discussion. As we, as we build up psychological resources inside, like a greater sense of calm or um, a sense of ease or a sense of open-heartedness, uh, as we build up these resources inside, that helps us face the hard things in life that affect others and ourselves. Then as we build up these resources, then we don't feel so overwhelmed by personal pain, the sorrows of others, and social injustice. It doesn't mean that we check out from it. It's that we actually become more able to face it and to deal with it effectively 
and, in particular, bring compassion to it. Compassion is simple. It's a fundamental, warm-hearted response to suffering that is moved to relieve it and to change the things that cause it. And it really is perhaps the essence of being human. Remarkably, most primate species, and there are hundreds of them, depending how you count it. Um, I looked at Wikipedia earlier, and there's something like between 300, 375 and 575 primate species. There are a lot of them. Generally, they live together in bands based on a, a kind of social structure that Professor Paul Gilbert has termed holding and controlling. In other words, the few dominate and control the many. That's the standard operating procedure in all primate species except our own. Wow. Over millions of years, our human and, ho our, our human and hominid ancestors evolved a very different way of living together, one that's truly unique among the many hundreds of other primate species. Um, as they evolved their big social brains, that's the term, uh, in their small hunter-gatherer bands, living together their whole lives with roughly the same 50 people, some leavings and some comings, but pretty stable, small group of people. Um, the foundation of their social life is what Professor Gilbert has termed caring and sharing. In other words, compassion and justice. This is central to our human nature. It's central to your personal, biologically evolved human nature. And it has been the fundamental basis for living together for most of the past 300,000 years that our particular anatomically modern Homo sapiens species has walked the earth. 300,000 years. This is the natural, healthy foundation of social life. The recognition of suffering in each other and in ourselves, a caring response to it, and a desire to relieve it if we can. This is fundamental. This is who we naturally really are. That alone is a cause for celebration and comfort. And it's a challenge to us to actually find ways to live on that basis now uh, in the 21st century. I once asked the meditation teacher, Gil Fronstel, uh, deep, wise, brilliant teacher, what he, what he was focusing on these days in his own personal practice. It's a good question for a teacher. He paused for a moment, and then with a little smile, he said, I stopped for suffering. I've never forgotten that. Suffering in himself and in others from subtle forms of physical or emotional discomfort all the way to agonizing physical and emotional pain, stopping for suffering. So I thought we could do another brief experiential practice right now for you know five minutes or so to stop for suffering. So I invite you to do this practice with me now. You know, the essence of compassion and the foundation of healthy, sustainable social life with others is to stop for suffering. It's, suffering is not the whole of our life, but it's a significant part of it in others and ourselves. And we need to see it, not turn away from it, not blow past it, and not be casual about the things that cause it. So let's stop for suffering here. First, to be able to stop for suffering, it helps to resource yourself. So take a moment to return to the sense of slowing down, finding a feeling of calming inside, perhaps also with a sense of strength. And awareness of your heart, feeling in the heart. Kind of open-hearted, calm strength that helps us be more able to stop for suffering. 
And then take a little time to look back over the past year for yourself. I'll do this practice with you. And acknowledge some of the things that have been challenging about it for you. And perhaps the losses, stresses, burdens, sorrow, regret, remorse that you've experienced over the past year. Not being swept away by it all. Compassion brings warmth and caring to suffering. Not just the suffering, but warmth and caring for it. See if you can bring warmth and caring for your own hard times this past year. And second, stopping for the suffering of others. Just taking a moment, recognizing how the past year has been challenging for others, whether close to home or on the other side of the world. And as you recognize and have empathy for some of what they've been going through, not overwhelmed by it, Focus on a compassionate response to it. Yeah, wishing that there wasn't that suffering or being supportive about it, suffering in others. Knowing that your compassion is real even if you can't change anything. That's a very important point. We're moved to help, but sometimes we can't. And still, we can have that tender concern for the suffering in ourselves and others. You might have soft thoughts such as, may you not suffer. May your pain ease. May you find food. May you find justice. As we face the suffering of the world, Research has shown actually that we can have empathy burnout, but we don't need to have compassion burnout. Generally, there isn't compassion burnout because the compassion itself with its warm-hearted concern is protective and feeds us as it flows through us. Focusing on that warm-hearted caring response to the sorrows of the world helps us bear them and be effective in relieving them. And as we finish, we can all rest in the hope and the intention that compassion and justice can spread through the world like a rising tide carrying all beings, known and unknown, seen and unseen, human and not human, all beings entwined together, compassion and justice spreading throughout our troubled world, omitting none. Okay, come on back. Uh, it's fine to keep, of course, radiating goodwill and wishing others well. So as we look ahead to the coming year, right? 
still rested in whatever has touched your heart from the practice we just did of compassion for yourself and compassion for others and compassion for the whole world. Resting in that. Look ahead to the coming year, however you mark it. So I have three questions for you as a kind of experiential reflection. The first question is, out of compassion for yourself in the coming year, what's one thing in particular that you want to do for yourself in 2023? It could be continuing to do something that's really important to you and making sure it doesn't you know, move to the sidelines, perhaps something like regular meditation or regular exercise or a regular sense of having a moment of gratitude at a meal. It might be to stop doing something that's not so good for you, like you know, spending too much time in political TV. I've been working on that myself. Or you know, not being so hard on yourself, not beating yourself up, uh, maybe not using so much alcohol. Perhaps that's something that out of compassion for yourself, you know it'd be good for you. And it might be starting something, like going for a regular walk every day or um, taking a minute each day or more in some kind of uh, practice of personal refuge, just sitting quietly, staring into space, maybe reading uh, some poetry, the, the daily word, um, you know, something that's meaningful to you. So I'll be quiet for a moment. As you consider, what is that one thing? And it's okay to have several things, but for sure know what your one thing is. And imagine doing it over the course of the coming year for real. Sticking with it for real. How might that change your year for the better? Being realistic as you imagine the year to come, knowing, noticing ways that it might be a little challenging to keep doing this one thing, how could you support yourself in staying with this one thing that's really valuable for you, out of compassion for your own suffering and out of good wishes for your own well-being? And notice some of the benefits to you, imagining those as well, how it would help you and probably others too for you to do this one thing in the coming year. And as you imagine this and the rewards of being in this way, doing in this way over the year to come, let the resolve and the commitment to stick with it really sink into you. Like, yeah, I really am. I really am going to stick with this, whatever it is for you. Let that sink in, that resolve, that commitment. And then second, out of compassion for someone else in your life. What's one thing you want to do related to them in the coming year? Perhaps be a little more patient with them, uh, a little less prone to interrupting them or tuning them out. Or maybe you want to contact them more regularly. Perhaps a, an aging parent you want to reach out to more. Maybe there's a neighbor that you've been at odds with and you'd, you'd like to be with them in a less conflictual way. Maybe you have a partner or a roommate and you could resolve to uh, do, more, do more of the dishes, <laughs> perhaps, something simple. 
or it could be something really big, like a fundamental commitment to rest in love as you interact with someone. So I'll be quiet here now as you imagine actually doing this in the year to come. Being realistic about it and seeing yourself help yourself maybe move through some challenges to sustaining this with the other person. They may not respond perfectly <laughs> as you do this, but still you do it for its own sake. Be aware of what's good about doing this for the other person, the benefits for them, the benefits for yourself, maybe others too. And as you recognize those benefits, let the commitment and the resolve to actually do this for that other person, with that other person, let the commitment sink in. You could let it sink in that you actually will do this. You might feel that this intention, this purpose, is carrying you along like a current, like a warm river carrying you along in the coming year so that you actually act in this way toward the other person. And now let's look at our one world, our whole world, all together. Out of compassion, what's one thing that you could do to help reduce suffering in our world and promote the flourishing of humanity and nature, who are, of course, entwined together? One thing for the world. And it's okay to have more than one, but for sure one. It might simply be a matter of being kinder to strangers, even as you pass them on the street, or supporting some cause in one way or another. Perhaps it's eating less beef, which besides the impact on non-human animals could really help with global warming, or protecting the right to vote when voting is even possible, or taking a strong public stand yourself simply for compassion and justice. What's one thing that you're moved to maybe keep doing, to make sure it doesn't fade to the side, or to, or to perhaps stop doing, or to start doing one thing for the world? And then imagine yourself actually doing it in this coming year. Be realistic. Maybe see some of the ways that this one thing might be a challenge for you, or it might tend to be you know, pushed to the back of the stove and see if you can see yourself moving through those challenges realistically to keep on doing, to keep on doing this one thing for the world out of compassion for it.
personally, uh, several things come to my own mind, and definitely among them is to continue to support this Global Compassion Coalition as a, as a thing to do for the world. And as you imagine this offering, in effect, that you're making out into the world, see the benefits of it, including simply the moral benefits of taking a stand, even if you can't change anything, adding your stand, your voice, to countless others around the world. And as you reflect on all this, feel the resolve, feel the commitment sinking into you. Yes, to support the world in this way. And as we finish up this experiential reflection and, and rest in compassion for ourselves, for someone and someone's perhaps, and compassion for the whole world, you can feel actually that this, this compassion is, is healing and, and feeding of you, and it brings hope in this vision of a world that can be in which compassion and justice flow through us and as us for ourselves and for others, that's hopeful. And it's really important to appreciate that there are always things we can do in the sacred inner sanctuary of our own being that no one can stop us from doing inside our own minds. We can mobilize compassion and care and concern and commitment to justice inside ourselves. We have the power to do that, which is wonderful to know at a time when so many of us feel pushed around in so many ways. It's hopeful and healing and supportive to claim this power for ourselves, to know where we stand inside our own hearts and to rest in our commitments toward compassion and justice for ourselves and, and other beings. That itself uh, is a form of resting and renewal, which is really good news. As we finish, I'd like to underline the fact, the remarkable fact, that our biological nature, <laughs> you know, this evolved body, is designed to live together on the basis with other people on the basis of caring and sharing, compassion and justice. That's what is natural for us. The societies, on the other hand, in which most of us live today, including myself here in America, the societies in which most of us live today with their extreme concentrations of wealth and power and systems of injustice that advantage the few at the cost of the many are profoundly abnormal. And if I may use some California jargon, they are seriously whack, <laughs> whack. <laughs> no way to live <laughs> together. And yet the systems in which we live, which are the water we swim in and easy to take for granted, are forces away from our nature, which is to live together on the basis of caring and sharing, compassion and justice. They drive us from that home, these large-scale systems that seem so, of course, and yet they're profoundly abnormal. 97% of the time that our species, people like you and me, have walked the earth has been on the basis of caring and sharing as they live together. The last 3%, last roughly 10,000 years, has been totally weird. 
totally abnormal and pathological and the primary source of vast and fundamentally preventable suffering for humans and non-human species and our whole planet altogether. It's really radical. It's really powerful to recognize the, the absurdity, the abnormality, the constructed unnaturalness of the way in which most of us live together these days. Yes, definitely. Some things have improved over the past few centuries. You know, still today, roughly 10,000 children around the world, trigger warning here, roughly 10,000 children around the world will die today from hunger and its consequences. Eight men uh, have as much wealth together as 4 billion people. And we continue racing toward worse and worse climate catastrophes. The only sustainable way for humanity and nature to thrive together is to return to our true nature, our fundamental, ordinary, evolved biological nature, and to reestablish caring and sharing, compassion and justice at the heart of global society. This will take millions of people and organizations joining together in common cause for the greater good. We cannot be naive uh, or merely hopeful uh, about what it will actually take. It will take millions of people and organizations joining together in common cause for the greater good to be big enough, to be strong enough to make the changes we need. Much as our own wise ancestors came together to see the suffering in each other, to hear the deep voices in each other's hearts, and to find and feel compassion. And on the basis of that compassion, to take care of everyone, no one left out, everyone included, much as we can today coming together in our one whole human tribe. So I hope you will join me. I hope you will join me and thousands and hopefully soon millions of others in this growing global coalition for compassionate action. For your own sake, to feel that you stand together with others, which is so hopeful, and for the sake of all beings. All of your contributions are welcome, by the way, in this coalition. Simply per being part of it is a contribution. Looking around and appreciating and celebrating the others who are with you is a contribution. You're telling others about this coalition and encouraging them to be members too. Um, and your donation, if you're able to make one. In our practical world, in which we need to keep the lights on and uh, to pay people appropriately uh, for their work, uh, money does help. Money does help. And if you have the means to offer a substantial financial support, please, really, reach out to me personally using the contact form at the bottom of our homepage. And now let's settle in, finishing up here, and bring this event to a close together. Uh, in the way we're doing this meeting, you can't see the other people here, but you can know they're here with you. You are with them and they are with you. And I am with you right here and right now. We, we are forming a little coalition, as it were, ourselves, right here, right now. And you can be aware of being with others, aware of others being with you, and rest in the feeling and the wish that you and every being you care about and the whole wide world may have a good new year. Wishing, feeling, resting, renewing, feeling your own good heart with good wishes 
and warm-heartedness rippling outward, spreading throughout the whole wide world. <laughs>